Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Almost all boas eventually will eat frozen thawed prey items and it's always recommended to feed frozen thawed whenever possible. However, some types of boas are just a little bit harder to get switched from live prey items to frozen thawed. Today I'm going to go over the different types of boas and comment on how easy or hard it is to get them onto the frozen thawed prey items. I'm also going to give you guys some hints about how to best accomplish this transition and I'm going to show you guys a number of really nice boas born here over the last five years or so so be sure to stay tuned. So as I mentioned almost all boas eventually will eat frozen thawed prey items and all the adult boas in my collection with a few small exceptions always eat frozen thawed with no issues and these are animals two years or older typically. I have a few animals that are kind of picky, which I'll comment on later. You know, sometimes they, they want a certain type of prey item. Uh, but in general, you don't need to worry about your bow and not eating a frozen thawed prey item. And I know this is a big concern. A lot of people have been asking me about baby boas and if they're eating frozen thawed because they're not able to provide anything other than frozen thawed. And so of course this is a key consideration when you're getting a boa because you want to give it food that it's going to eat. So whenever possible I do switch all my baby boas over and for some types of boas it's really easy. Other types of boas it's kind of intermediate and there's a few types of boas that it's kind of challenging to get them to eat frozen thawed before they're about a year or so old. And when you're searching for a boa it's really important that you ask the breeder or seller if your animal eats frozen thawed. Do not assume, you know, assume, make an ass of you and me. So ask specifically, does this boa eat frozen thawed? I can't provide any live prey items because you don't want to be in a situation where you can't uh, feed your boa properly. My general routine when I'm getting my baby boas feeding and established is that the first two to three meals I offer are live prey items, typically a mouse fuzzy or mouse hopper, because I know that a lot of boas from the initial feeding, they're not going to be interested in frozen thawed prey items. And so after about two to three feedings, I switch them over to frozen thawed whenever possible. And in some cases, it's really easy. And I thought I'd start with this Suriname red tail. This is the type of animal. It's super easy to get eating on the frozen thawed. In fact, I had a whole litter this year and 90% of the litter took frozen thawed from their first meal. I didn't have to give them any live, you know, which is always great. So in general, the red tails are almost always will switch to frozen thawed really easy. This is a Suriname born here in 2020. This guy is about two years old. He's maybe a little bit on the small side. He was a little small at birth and you know so I'd say he's a little smaller than some of my other two-year-old Surinams but doing really well. Got really nice muscle definition so I don't have any concerns about where this guy is and you know as I said many times before you don't need to be obsessed about your boa's growth rate as long as they're growing slowly but steadily they're probably perfectly fine. So in general, my Surinams are really easy. Um, of the four litters I had this year, I really had no issues with any, getting any of them to eat frozen thawed. Some of them held out maybe four or five meals. They were a little bit more picky, but about 90% of them ate frozen thawed after the first three or within the first three meals. So Surinams and other red tails, very easy to get feeding on frozen thawed. They have other types of feeding issues like regurgitation, which I've covered in other videos. But as far as getting them to eat frozen thawed, it's a, typically a piece of cake. Here's another true red tail that's very easy to get feeding on frozen thawed. This is a Procalpa Peruvian red tail born here also in 2020. And I just thought I'd get him out because you can see he's quite a bit bigger than the male Suriname I just showed you but born the same time and they've been given the same food feeding regimen. Some animals just grow faster than others. And this is just, you know, part of the individual differences. In general, the Peruvians also grow faster and the Surinams are typically quite a bit bigger at birth. And then they just put on the size a little bit faster, but typically they both max out at about the same size. Most of the adults are somewhere in the six to eight foot range. Another type of boa that's really easy to get feeding on frozen thawed are morph boas. And I know this is a huge group encompassing probably the majority of pet boas that are out there, 
but it's really not surprising because at this point morph boas are at the least semi-domestic and a lot of people myself included would argue that they're really fully domesticated animals at this point of their history being bred in captivity and so they've already evolved quite a bit to change in order to be more suited to captivity, both from uh, deliberate selection as well as non-deliberate selection, uh, which is you know the subject of another video. But I just wanted to show you guys this one. This is a Super Moran Jungle. This is you know one of my favorite boas I produced in 2022, which is my first year at breeding morph boas, and this animal is yeah, really quite spectacular. The Super Moran has this beautiful red color, uh, the, the jungly pattern. Just a really cool looking boa. And you know, really what something I would consider to be living art or designer boa. I know it's not your cup of tea if you're like most of the people that watch this channel and are really into the localities. And I love the localities and they're you know probably 90% of my efforts in my collection. But I can't resist the fun and the uh, enjoyment of working with a few morphs. Morph boas in general are really well adapted to captivity and they almost always will take frozen thawed with no problem. In many cases they'll take frozen thawed from their first meal. And this makes sense given all the changes that they've undergone in the last few decades in order to evolve to be better adapted to captivity. Next I want to show you guys a few boas that are typically not very difficult to get eating on frozen thawed. But there's always a few that are holdouts. And I would say in this group, probably about 75% of them eat frozen thawed, no problem. But I have a few individual animals that just want to stick to live. And typically they might stick on live you know, for six months or so. Uh, and typically they'll move over. Often what I've noticed with these animals is they'll take a frozen thawed and they uh, will uh, strike at it and constrict it. But then they release it and because it's not moving. So they're a little confused. So sometimes you have to take the rodent up and jiggle it in front of their snout and have them strike it again. And you might have to go through this process a few times before they figure out its food. Sometimes it's easy with animals like this to sw switch them onto a fresh killed animal as a transition from live to frozen thawed. So it gives them that extra step to basically figure out that what they're having is food even though it's not alive and moving. And so the first type of boa that's typically not too hard is the longicata like this one. This is a uh, 2021 holdback doing really nicely. But almost all my longicata will feed on frozen thawed. I would say of the litter that I had this year, which was uh, 17 animals, there's like four or five of them that still are insisting on live. And these guys are now six months old. The rest all ate the frozen thawed within a few meals. Not exactly sure why these animals are insisting on the live, but they just are. With each feeding, it seems like I'm getting like another one that's switching on to the frozen thawed but there's just a few holdouts. So I would say if you're gonna buy a longicata boa, it's a pretty good chance it's already on frozen thawed. But again, just make sure you ask the seller, is it eating frozen thawed, if that's gonna be an issue for you. But in general, these longicata boas, real simple to keep, take care of, real simple husbandry, beautiful looking animal, pleasure to hold, a great species to work with if you're into locality boas. Another type of boa that's generally pretty easy to get on frozen thawed, but not in 100% of cases, is the Coops Pastel and other Colombian boas. So this is a Coops Pastel born here this year. And of my litter of about a dozen animals, 90% of them switched over to frozen thawed without any hassle. I actually still have two animals remaining that are still insisting on live. Not exactly sure why. Uh, but hopefully they'll swap over or switch over to frozen thawed soon. And this is actually one of the animals I held back. It's a really nice colorful female. So these guys, this project has been going on for multiple generations now from uh, Silvio Coops in Europe to Vin Russo where I got my, who bred my animals, that um, my, my breeders. And this is the offspring from those breeders. And so with each generation of crossing two Coops Pastels together, they're just getting more and more intensely colored. Real neat project. And you know, I've said many times before, Colombian boas are about the best pet boas. So, you know, great species to work with if you want an animal that you can take out and handle and it's gonna have relatively simple, straightforward husbandry. Just make sure that your animal is eating frozen thawed though. 
if that's an issue. And as I mentioned, the vast majority of them will be, but just make sure you ask the breeder or seller. One more example of a boa that's in kind of the intermediate category as far as switching from live to frozen thawed is this one. This is a Tarahumara mountain dwarf boa. And this is actually a young adult female. This female was born here in 2018. I decided not to breed her this year. Not quite ready, you know, kind of in between, but just wanted to maybe get a little bit more size and bulk on her before going into breeding trials. So she may go into breeding trials if uh, things go as planned for the 2024 season. But the Tarahuma are typically pretty easy to get onto frozen thawed, but I, they're a little harder than the two animals I just showed you. Uh, in general, you're more likely to have to kind of dangle it and jiggle it in front of them and make them think it's alive. It just seems like these dwarf boas in general are a little bit harder to get feeding on frozen thawed. Although the tar humor are definitely easier than some of the other dwarf island boas, which I'm going to get to in a minute. But uh, this female's doing real well. Beautiful, beautiful animal. I love the pinks and greens and iridescence. Just a great type of boa to work with. I actually do have uh, a pairing this year, so I'm hoping I'll have some more baby tar humara boas. Just not from this female. From my one of my older females is uh, actually paired up with some of my holdback males. So hopefully we'll have some baby tarhumars in the summer. Now we reach the last group of boas, which are the most challenging to get onto frozen thawed. And I'll say ahead of time that these animals almost always will eventually eat frozen thawed, but sometimes they're like a year, in some cases even two years old before they're regularly eating frozen thawed. There are some exceptions, of course, you know, some individuals will eat frozen thawed after like six months, but in general, these guys typically take about a year uh, to switch to the frozen thawed. And these animals all have one thing in common. They come from an island. So if your boa has the name island in the title, like Hog Island, Corn Island, Pearl Island, or Key slash K, spelled C-A-Y, like Quaw Key, Cocker Key, etc., chances are it's gonna be really hard to get feeding on frozen thawed before it's about a year old. And so I thought I'd start off with the Pearl Island boa, or Saboge boa. This is actually a 2019 female born here, doing real well. And so this animal, as well as the male that I held back from the litter, they're devouring frozen thawed rodents now. Very aggressive feeders, never a problem eating. But typically it's about a year before they'll eat frozen thawed. And I've noticed this with all my litters of the Pearl Island boas. I'll also say that this group in general, you do have sometimes individual animals that won't eat at all, even live. And with the Pearl Island boas, typically I'll have like one animal out of a litter of, you know, between six and 12 animals. You know, maybe one or two of those animals won't take frozen thawed or, or live from the beginning. And so I have to resort to assist feeding a mouse tail. And typically after I do this for a month or two, they'll switch to the live. But uh, in general, these guys are a little more tricky to get feeding but once you have them feeding it's usually no problem and then for some reason there's just kind of like a switch that goes off when they get to be about a year old and they start eating the frozen thawed but for some reason they don't want to eat that eat it before then um, but uh, in general great boa to work with i don't want this to dissuade you from getting a pearl island because they have a lot of great characteristics but you should just know that if you're getting a young one, you can probably expect that you're gonna feed it live for the first few months at least. This next bow is pretty similar to the Pearl Island in terms of getting onto frozen thawed. This is a Honduran firebelly boa, and you might say, well, no island in the title. Well, these guys are from the island of Roatan off of the coast of Honduras, so they are an island boa. And like most island boas, they typically don't want to eat frozen thawed until they're six months to a year or so. And I would say also with these guys, you're more likely to see these kind of weird feeding behaviors. You know, so all the animals I've raised, most of them, once they switch to the frozen thawed, they just take it and eat and they don't have a problem. But I do have one female, actually, not this one, but one of my females from the same litter as this guy, this is a 2018 male. They, she just um, didn't want to eat 
anything other than live until she was probably around three years old. And then she takes frozen thawed reluctantly, but typically we'll drop it. And then I'll have to go back and I'll have to, you know, pick it up again with my feeding tongs and dangle it in front of her and she grabs it and constricts. And then she typically will drop it again and we'll repeat this a few times and it gets kind of annoying. Typically she will eat it eventually. You know, sometimes I'll come back to the snake worm the next day and I'll smell something and she didn't eat it and the rodent is kind of you know, starting to decompose so I gotta toss it out and get a new one. But you know, she's just kind of a weird individual. Most of them will switch to frozen thawed. But um, in general, you will see individual boas within a given type that do have these behavioral differences. You know, every animal is different. They don't all behave the same. But uh, this male is doing real well. He is uh, probably gonna go into breeding next year. You can see the beautiful colors and beautiful pattern. But these are really cool animals. You can't beat them for the eye. I mean, these beautiful orange eyes, they might have the most beautiful eyes out of any boas in my collection, the under and fire belly boa. Another island boa that can be challenging to get feeding on frozen thawed before it's around six months to a year is the crawl key boa like this one. This is actually a two year old male and he's eating frozen thawed no problem. I actually held back two females from the same litter. This is a 2020 born animals and uh, one of the females actually didn't want to eat frozen thawed until this summer. You know, it was really challenging getting her to eat anything but live up until she was almost two years old. Now she's eating frozen thawed, no problem. Uh, this male, on the other hand, was pretty easy to get on frozen thawed when he was a year old. You know, when he was eating nothing but frozen thawed uh, by the time he had reached a year old. And every animal is different. But I wanted to show you guys this one because I had a litter of crawl key babies this year and none of them are on frozen thawed yet as, as far as I know. Certainly among the ones that are still remaining here unsold, they're all eating live still. I've been trying to get them on frozen thawed. I haven't had any luck so far. Uh, one of them I actually got to eat a pre-killed rodent uh, just the other day and this is one that's going to go out to uh, their new owner pretty soon. So just wanted to try to transition this one, but I couldn't get her to feed on a frozen thawed, unfortunately. So as I mentioned, I still have the ones remaining. Some of the crawl key are off to their new homes. And it, it's certainly possible that the new owners have gotten them to eat frozen thawed. So if you're watching and you have one of my 2022 crawl key babies, I'd love if you comment below on whether it's eating frozen thawed or not. But all the animals that remain here, are, no are not yet eating frozen thawed. And I can say the same thing about my cocker key babies. You know, I held back a few. None of them are eating frozen thawed. They all fed fine on live, but uh, none of them will eat frozen thawed yet. So I would figure that they're probably similar to the crawl key in terms of switching over to frozen thawed. You know, not an issue if you have access to a source of live baby mice but it could be an issue if you don't. You just wanna make sure that you get an animal that's old enough that it's already transitioned to the frozen thawed rodents. So just one more for this video, and I didn't intend to show you guys this many boas when I started the video, but I was just thinking of so many different examples, and I always love to show off these beautiful boas, so I kinda of got carried away. But this is a hog island boa, and these are, in my experience, the most challenging boas in terms of getting them feeding to begin with on rodents and then switching them over to frozen thawed. And this beautiful uh, animal is now three years old, 2019 born. He's eating fine on frozen thawed, no problem. I have a couple females from the litter that I held back. And although they're eating frozen thawed, they can be a little picky. You know, sometimes they'll wrap and constrict and then they'll release and I have to go back. Sometimes I miss out and you know, the next day the rodent is kind of decomposing and I have to get rid of it. But uh, the, my adults, you know, who are now like 10 years old, they have it, they eat frozen thawed, no problem. So I figured that these sub adults eventually will have no issues with feeding. Um, but you just have to be a little bit more observant, check to see if they ate the rodent 
um, etc. I'll also say that among the babies, I've had the most challenges with just getting hog island boas to be eat to begin with. And from each litter that I have, about a third of them don't eat from the beginning. They will not voluntarily feed on a live rodent. And typically when they're about two months or so old, I'll start assist feeding them mouse tails. I've tried lots of different tricks. I've made videos about different tricks you can use to get baby boas feeding. In general, I found that they usually don't work. I've tried feeding lizards, feeding bird parts, scenting with different uh, types of prey items. I tried one thing that actually did work for a few of them, which was to boil pinkies. And sometimes when you boil the pinkies, it seems to make the animals interested in eating them, which is kind of strange. But uh, in general, like I said, about a third of my hog island litters don't eat. The vast majority of them will eat after a month or two of assist feeding, but it's just something to be aware of. And be especially certain that you ask about what the hog island boa is eating if you're planning on buying one. Make sure it's feeding and then ask if it's eating live or frozen. Uh, you just don't want any surprises. And in general, these are amazing animals to work with. Just spectacularly beautiful locality boa great to handle so I would definitely not uh, dissuade you from getting one of these hog island boas as a pet I would just be uh, ask the questions and make sure that if you can't feed it live that you get an animal that's eating frozen thawed because most of these guys when they're still young they're probably not going to be feeding on frozen thawed you also just want to make sure it's feeding to begin with because there are some unscrupulous breeders who will sell babies before they're feeding uh, and you don't want to end up with one that's not feeding. You know, it's uh, very stressful and not something that a beginner should go through trying to get a baby boa to eat. And of course, all the animals that come from me are a guaranteed feeding. And I'll always tell you whether it's eating frozen thawed or not. Um, but like I said, most of my baby island boas that are less than six months to a year old, they're not gonna be feeding frozen thawed. They're gonna be on live. Uh, so you should plan accordingly if you're planning on getting one of those animals. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and it was somewhat helpful. If you're thinking about getting a baby boa, but you can't offer it live prey items, as always, shoot me any questions or comments that you have. I'd also love to hear your experience with different types of boas and how hard it's been to switch them over to frozen thawed. So please comment below. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.